Coming up, Google is talking about details of Honeycomb. Intel doesn't want to talk about Sandy Bridge, but we are going to talk about our contest and a whole lot more. The bar has been set wicked fast. It's rocked in the benchmarks. We're going to up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power. Maybe. I kind of understand this. Welcome to Two and a Half Geeks. I'm Ayaz Akhtar with Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta from Hot Hardware. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty good. Pretty good. How about you? I'm good. I cannot complain. Not, not bad for a Wednesday. Oh, is it Wednesday? But yeah, who knows when you who knows when you'll be watching this? Let's start talking about technology, shall we? Because that's what we talk about. Now, uh, Dave, Google showed off Honeycomb. They have a lot of details out there, and I was so busy today. I have actually no idea what happened. What What are the details? So yeah, and this is um, the release. I guess we've all been waiting for, if you will. Uh, Google announced officially announced honeycomb it's been under wraps for a while now we've all been rumoring about it uh, but yeah android 3.0 uh, which is their operating system for tablets was uh, announced today and certainly um, a tablet uh, to demonstrate it was the motorola zoom uh, spelled x o o m believe it or not fancy sort of marketing spelling there but yeah it's it's a it's a really a, a, a tablet uh, targeted operating system. I mean, before we've been looking at uh, Froyo and, and previous generation Android releases were targeted for handsets. And so the experience was certainly pretty slick because, you know, let's face it, uh, Android, you know, Froyo, at least the, the latest releases, it's a, it's a pretty nice, smooth operating system. But certainly there's, there, there were some creature comforts and, um, and UI optimizations to be done. And, and that's what Honeycomb uh, represents Android 3.0 for, for tablets. Was there anything that made it tablet specific that you really enjoyed? Because I know, I think they added some widget stuff. I know that they've, uh, what else did they do? They've, they've really made this for a tablet screen for one. So it's not like iOS or just Android, the same old, same old. What makes this, this tablet version specifically for tablets? Yeah, it's, it's really, it, it, it's hard to, to sort of, you know, get your head around unless you, you know, can see a live demo of it in person. Um, but it's, it's, it's really a, a revamp of the user interface. Um, certainly there's widgets and app show, shortcuts and, um, you know, so, sort of a whole new home screen uh, approach. Um, and, you know, what it amounts to is this takes what... Um, sort of what Apple did for the iPad with uh, iOS, um, where they went from the you know the handset uh, and iPod interface to you know their larger tablet form factor. It's, it's sort of the same sort of um, you know migration of you know that um, platform that was you know initially optimized for the small screen now on something you know ten inches uh, or, or, or of that size. So really uh, you know a, a larger high resolution. Uh, uh, interface or, or I should say a, a higher resolution interface with um, you know better optimized graphics and a, and a slicker UI for the larger screen for, for more real estate and uh, I think you know moving forward we're gonna see this this is where the tablets now uh, in the Android space you know everything else we've, we've been looking at iPad and oogling over that and you know the, the markets have been uh, you know clamoring after uh, Apple's stuff for a long time now we're gonna see uh, the Android tablets really take over. This is going to really give Apple uh, something to sweat. And competition's great, and uh, we're happy to see it. And we can't wait to get our first device in that that's running Android 3.0 because it's really going to take the Android tablet experience to the next level where it needs to go to compete with Apple. Now, Marco, let's talk about graphics cards because okay. every time I go to you, you talk about graphics cards. Are you ready? <laughs> To talk about the, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. But this this article is is very different than some of the previous ones that I've done. That's right. Because so, this is the AMD Radeon HD 6970M with Eurocom. Right. What is this? <laughs> so what, what's really interesting about this article because it it's kind of one of those situations where the stars aligned and we were able to test not only single GPU but dual GPU is in a notebook and also use the same notebook as the test platform to test AMD and NVIDIA mobile GPUs. So we got this just ginormous monster of a notebook from Eurocom, the Panther 2.0. It's a, a Clevo white book packed basically with desktop components. And our man Mike Lynn tested the Radeon HD 6970M in single card and crossfire, and the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 470M in single card and SLI 
you know, and got to do a true, you know, apples to apples comparison between two competing GPUs. And what, what did you find out when you compared both of them? So compared to, you know, the stuff we had in-house, the 6970M was a notch ahead of the GTX 470M. Virtually across the board, there's some instances where the 470M can catch up, um, whether it be in single card or multi-GPU. Um, but we should point out that the 6970M is AMD's top of the line mobile GPU right now. NVIDIA has a couple of higher end units either here, the GTX 480, or coming, which is the GTX 485M, but we just didn't have access to those to test in this platform. So what we basically show is that AMD's high end is a notch ahead of the 470, but how it compares to NVIDIA's top of the line, we can't say just yet, but it should be pretty competitive. So any chance these things don't kill batteries right away? No, this machine <laughs> barely, with, with, two, with two GPUs in there, barely gets a half an hour battery life. Um, Mike basically says, consider the battery in this notebook uh, nothing more than a UPS. You should be using it plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you, if you want your battery to last a long time, you could use something like a Sandy Bridge processor. If it works, though, I heard Intel had a huge problem with, uh, I think, a design flaw with Sandy Bridge. Dave, what do you know about that? Yeah, Intel's got uh, certainly their, their hands full with this one. And we should also know, by the way, before we move on, that the GTX 485M is in-house, and we're testing it, and so stick around for uh, updates on that. We're, we're going to have uh, you know a, a new update for you. Uh, yeah, it's just in a different notebook. That's stuff. all. Yeah, so, and, and yeah, Intel's got uh, issues with, um, with the desktop side of things, and uh, it turns out the P67 chipset, uh, which supports the new Sandy Bridge processor, has a small issue with the SATA uh, block in uh, the I.O. Southbridge. Um, turns out, believe it or not, it's not the SATA, uh, it's not a SATA 6G issue, it's a, it's a 3G SATA, the original, you know, first gen uh, SATA, the 3 gigabit per second, which is actually SATA 2, excuse me, um, <clears throat> that uh, they found out over extended life testing um, does begin to exhibit uh, a failure mode um, where data is lost um, and not written to a drive. Um, and so accelerated life testing is a funny sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's really a corner case, what, you know, in, in semiconductor speak, we would call a corner case test condition where, you know, you beat on this thing a certain way for a certain amount of hours and it will exhibit, um, you know, data loss. It, it will, it will fail. Now, if somebody actually has one of these faulty uh, motherboard chipsets, what should they do? Uh, there, there is a recall, um, and certainly manufacturers will be exchanging product. Uh, there's what's called a purge in the field of chipsets as well for manufacturing, and so it's 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 your proverbial nightmare that, frankly. Not a lot of end users are going to have to worry about all that much. I mean, I, I want to say I have to I have to look up the numbers, but Marco, help me if I'm if I'm not recalling. It's like three years uh, extended well, life testing, right? Right. They're, they're saying you know on average under you know a typical you know use case, three years and maybe five percent of chipsets will be affected. And just to clarify, it's all six series chipsets, not just the P67. Um, but if you're using just the SATA six ports. You don't really have to worry about it. Right. So if you only have one, you know, one hard drive and an optical drive on your state of six ports, you're okay. But should you, you know, want to exchange your board, just about all of the, the motherboard manufacturers are putting uh, exchange systems in place, or it will even refund your money at this point. Well, and let's face it, who's going who's to have, I mean, I, I guess certainly there are some users that are going to have these boards after about three years or so and, and you know, shaking and baking them that long. Um, but really, it's it's a headache for Intel more than anything because, you know, f frankly, do you have to go scrambling to return your motherboard? Probably not. Um, but, you know, Intel is going to suffer a $300 million loss in Q1 revenue on this thing and a $700 million uh, cost of, uh, you know, exchanging hardware in the field of, of recouping the, the hardware damage for the manufacturing partner. So it's a billion dollars net that <laughs> Intel's going to suck up over this failure issue. And um, it, from a manufacturing perspective, it's a total nightmare. From an end user perspective, eh, I, I, I don't think so much. Oh, sounds like a problem. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. let's, let's talk about more refreshing or happier news. Let's talk about the <laughs> HTC Evo Shift 4G. I know Hot Hardware had a full review of this, uh, I guess, smaller Evo. I think it's got a slider uh, QWERTY keyboard. Marco, right. what do you know? So it's actually, it, it was so close to being, you know, almost my ideal uh, handset. You take the, the high-end Evo, you shrink it down to a 3.6-inch screen, add a slide-out keyboard, you think you got the perfect combo of, uh, of power and, you know, usability. But HTC kind of pared a few things down. Um, it's got an 800 megahertz chip instead of a 1 gigahertz chip. Okay. It only comes with 2 gigs of extra storage. Um, but what's interesting is throughout the testing, uh, it's only really a notch behind the 1 gigahertz chips. You'd think with a 20% reduction in clock, the thing would be 20% slower than a lot of the one gigahertz phones out there. But we're finding that's not really the case with the mobile handsets, whether it be due to software optimizations or what have you. So it turned out to be a pretty snappy phone. Just wish it, it came with a little more storage. And of course, like the original Evo, battery life's okay. It's not great, but for the kind of, uh, you know, the, the kind of features uh, for this kind of handset, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's still pretty nice. Just barely missed the mark of being perfect, though. What did you think of the actual hardware? I mean, how is the slider? Does it feel uh, like it's constructed well? Do the key, does the keyboard feel good? Or, I mean, and like, what's the resolution of the actual screen? Is it the same resolution on a smaller screen or what? <laughs> um, yeah, let me just double check because uh, Julie's the one that did the review, but I did have my hands on one. The screen is, uh, what is the res? I don't see it, but I believe it's 800 by 480, just like the larger screen. Okay, but it's a smaller the, the space. Smaller space, but you know most of the phones that aren't an iPhone are 800 by 480. Um, that's kind of the the popular res in that in that form factor. Mm -hmm. The uh, the issue with the keyboard, you know, it doesn't the keys don't have a lot of travel. It's kind of a really thin keyboard, oh. so it does take some getting used to, especially if you've tried uh, the Samsung or like the HTC Tilt 2. The keys are, are much more tact tactile and have more travel. But once you get used to it, it's okay. It's not bad. Uh, HTC makes uh, some some decent hardware. Now, what in particular stopped this from being one of your favorite phones? Well, for me personally, I, you know, I wouldn't buy a phone if it wasn't the high end on the market at that point. So if it had a faster chip, if it came with more storage, only comes with two gig, um, and it had better battery life, it would kind of be ideal. But it's just not quite there in those three categories. Still, a, still a great phone though. All right, let's go talk about our contest, shall we, Dave? <laughs> sure. Yeah, we're giving away some free stuff again, and uh, this this time it is a fully loaded Core i7-870 gaming system built by the big man, Marco Cipetta, uh himself. Yeah. Uh, built built so clean on the inside, by the way, that you can eat off it, because the guy does some mad cabling work. Um, and I, yeah, will so be eating, I will be eating off it, because I eat in my office all the time. But, oh boy, a little pasta vajul <laughs> on the cables. You know, just don't mind those, just, just wipe it away. So yeah, so <laughs> chilling, <laughs> chilling out with the HH Community Sweepstakes is the name of the contest. And we're giving away a, a, an Intel Core i7-870 rig with a Radeon HD 6870 graphics card. Really nice Zygmatek case, 760 watt PC power and cooling power supply, 4 gig of DDR3 memory, P55 board from Gigabyte, and a Velociraptor from Western Digital 600 gig hard drive for, for bulk storage now. This is, this is for the... The, the, the bulk storage, and an SSD, uh, OCZ Vertex 2 SSD, 120 gig, thanks to our friends at OCZ, by the way, for a boot drive, um, and of course your optical drive and, and all that good stuff. You know, really nice system, and what we're trying to do here is we're trying to, you know, every time we have these contests, we try and build in a little bit of community involvement. We're trying to get the readers to make, you know, the hard hardware community their own and really participate. Uh, Commenting uh, in the news and contributing in the forum is going to get you noticed, and uh, you could win it if we see your name, uh, you know, contributing some good stuff. You know, make make this place your own, and 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 you could win. Well, we got no reader questions today, but we have the Super Bowl coming up. Let's talk about our Super Bowl picks. We got Packers and Steelers. Who do you got, oh, Dave? The Pack. <laughs> oh, I'm so sick of Roethlisberger. The Pack, please, Marco. What will you so be doing I, on Super on Super Bowl Sunday? Will you be rooting for a team? Or I, I'll be eating pizza and wings while the people I have coming over are rooting for a team. I follow no sport but boxing. Um, I'm just using the Super Bowl as a reason to throw a party. Um, but you know, I'll go out on a limb and I'm going to say Steelers. I did watch the playoff games and both uh, Green Bay and Pittsburgh. They kind of only played uh, 
you know, for two quarters. So I don't see either team kicking ass for all four quarters, but I think Pittsburgh's going to be a little tougher. How festive. Are you going to play hostess, are you, Marco? <laughs> yes, I'm going to play hostess and have Yay. some wings. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm picking the Steelers because there's no way the Packers are winning this. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Little cheese, man. They're not going to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, the Patriots offered up the proverbial New England choke uh, as they went out, you know, with a fourteen and two record or whatever it was, and then choked getting into the playoffs. It's like, come on! Well, but, the cameras must have fogged up at the end of the season. Oh you know, yeah, it's the cameras. We haven't heard that <laughs> like eight times. Uh, how many times do we have to have a, a great record before you people give us real credit? <laughs> we're not cheating. Uh, we're, don't we're, take we're, it to heart when I say it. We're rapidly know. losing. We're rapidly but, losing yeah. the audience here. We're gonna have to. <laughs> we're gonna have to explain to you guys that don't forget every story we talked about is at hothardware.com, and if you want to go to Hot Hardware around the web. You can check out dig.com slash hot hardware, twitter.com slash hot hardware, facebook.com slash hot hardware, and youtube.com slash hot hardware vids. Or, once again, you can always go back to hothardware.com where you can read some really glowing prose by the two gentlemen right there. Boy. And other people, by the way. They actually write yes. some really great stuff there. And we will see everybody next week. Uh, have fun at your Super Bowl and uh, enjoy your, your uh, entertaining, Marco. What did I do? <laughs>